Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 allows the processor to run faster than the base specification. It allows this when the processor is running below temperature, current, and power limitations. The ultimate advantage is of course that you'll get higher single-threaded and multi-threaded performance. First, I want to show you how you can identify Turbo Boost power limit issues or constraints on your system. We can use hardware info to identify what is limiting our Turbo Boost 2.0 performance. The objective as an overclocker is to have the Turbo Boost performance limited only by the max turbo ratio limit. That is the maximum CPU ratio configured in the BIOS. Turbo Boost 2.0 ratio configuration allows us to configure the overclock for different scenarios ranging from one active core to all active cores. That enables us to run some cores significantly faster than others when the conditions are right. Intel provides eight registers to configure the Turbo Boost 2.0 ratio. For mainstream platforms where the top SKU has no more than eight P cores, like this Core i9-11980HK, these registers are configured from one active P core to eight active P cores. However, on platforms with core counts beyond eight cores, we can configure each register by target turbo boost ratio and the number of active cores. Note that configuring the turbo ratios based on an active core count is not the same as overclocking each core individually. When we configure a turbo ratio based on the active core count, we have the CPU change frequency based on the actual usage. So let's say for example, there's four active cores. Well, then the CPU will decide which of the cores will run at the frequency that we set through the turbo ratio configuration. Let's see how things work in the real world. We use Prime95 to push the workload and track the performance behavior in hardware info. When the system is idle, we can see that max turbo limit is triggered. When we launch Prime95 with all cores enabled, we find that quickly the thermal event performance limiter is triggered due to the CPU temperature. Then we find that the PL1 performance limiter is active a few moments later. The solution for the latter is pretty simple. Increase the PL1 limit. Traditionally, when we talk about configuring Turbo Boost 2.0, we refer to the Turbo Boost algorithm, which works according to a proprietary EWMA formula. Usually, there are only three parameters to consider. PL1, PL2, and tau. Power limit 1, or PL1, is the threshold the average power will not exceed. Historically, this has always been set to Intel's advertised TDP. PL1 should not be set higher than the thermal solution cooling limit. Power limit 2, or PL2, is the maximum power the processor can use for a limited time. Tau, in seconds, is the time window for calculating the average power consumption. The CPU will reduce the CPU frequency if the average power consumed exceeds PL1. We go into the BIOS and program it to the maximum value of 4095.875 watts. Then we rerun Prime95 and find that a new performance limiter is activated, PL2 or PL3. So we go back into the BIOS and program PL2 to its maximum value of 4095.875 watts. In addition to PL1 and PL2, we must consider a number of other Turbo Boost 2.0 parameters. These parameters include the system power limits, power delivery limits, and temperatures. In our case, we will specifically configure three additional parameters, PL4, VRTDC, and VRIMAX. We rerun Prime95 and find that a new performance limiter is activated, electrical design point slash other, which include ICC Max and PL4. So we go back into the BIOS and program ICC Max to its maximum value of 1023 amps. VR IMAX is the maximum current limit for the voltage regulator. Then we rerun Prime95 and find that the same performance limiter is activated when we enable AVX. So we go back into the BIOS and program PL4 to its maximum value of 4095.875 watt. Contrary to PL1, PL2, and PL3, PL4 is not a measured power limit, but an estimated power limit. The power limit triggers preemptively when the CPU power control unit projects an extreme short power surge beyond PL2 in the very next instant. 
It projects the power by calculating the potential peak power or PPP, which is a value based on the component characteristics and the present operating frequency. When PPP exceeds PL4, the PCU will automatically set a lower frequency. We rerun Prime95 and find that a new performance limiter is activated, VRTDC. So we go back into the BIOS and program TDC current limit to its maximum value of 4095.875 amps. VRTDC is the average per rail current limit of the voltage regulator of the CPU cores. It is designed to match the CPU throttling behavior to the motherboard voltage regulator design. It's intended to gradually adjust the CPU frequency and voltage based on the capability of the voltage regulator. After these changes, the only performance limiters still active are the thermal event, in case our CPU hits the TJ max, or max turbo limit. Adjusting the power limits is, strictly speaking, not considered overclocking. And that's because we don't change any of the CPU's electrical, thermal, or frequency parameters. Intel provides the Turbo Boost 2.0 power limits as a guidance to system integrators and motherboard vendors. And that's just to ensure that their designs can meet the base specification of the processors. But as we all know, better motherboard designs and better thermal solutions can enable peak performance for longer. But don't take my word for it. It will become very clear what separates overclocking and not overclocking on Intel CPUs. Enter the CPU lock configuration submenu. Here we can remove the locks that prevent any overclocking settings to become effective. Without disabling the locks, overclocking won't be possible. That's it for today. I want to thank you for watching and the Patreons for the support. As per usual, I'll have a written version of this video up on my blog. And if you have any questions or comments, you can drop them in the comment section below. And yep, yeah, that's it. See you next time.